So the first demo I'm going to show you is, is actually uh, just a, a basic reader demo. Um, so I'm going to go up and generate a workspace. I'll be connecting to a local machine here, and I'm going to just wipe that out. I'll, I'm, a, I'm actually going to, when I connect here, I'm going to show external name usage for features. I know, I know for um, a lot of European customers, there is a requirement there where the internal names of the small world tables and databases and, and attribute values are different to the external names, and a lot of users need to use that external name representation. So um, I, in this first part, I'm just going to use uh, external names only for the part of the demo. So I'm going to pull out gas mains and annotation. And I'll also pull out some valves as well. So having specified those, I'm going to store the results in, a, in a, an FFS data store. I mean, obviously, you could store it to any supported format. I'm just using this format just because it's beneficial for me uh, as part of the demonstration. So go off and build the workspace now. So when I look at the attributes, you can see the attributes are all in uppercase, the, the, basically the, the small world external name representation. Um, and rather than write to the out, actual output file, I'm going to redirect to the inspector just so that I can actually show you the results of running these more quickly because we've got quite a few things to go through. So like having selected that, go off, it will then go and search through my uh, local database. I think there's about 12 to 15,000 records or something in this data set, so it'll take a few seconds to run. So what it's doing is it's pulling out those gas features, uh, saving them as FFS file records and then it will open up the inspector so we can see the results. Okay, so there's all my results come back. I've got mains uh, and valves. I'll just change the color on that. So let me just zoom into an area and I'll just show you some of the, the results that came out. A gas main the attribute associated with it. I just want to draw your attention to this FME DB operation, uh, which is an attribute value that's, that's added to the data set by FME um, as the product runs. I just want to, you know, I'll be coming back to that later on, but this is just basically to show that information. A whole series of other information comes out as well. If I select uh, valves, I can see the attribution associated with that. What's also interesting is, as well is on the annotations here, you'll see there's two dots. So hopefully you can make out that there's two dots there that are being displayed. The um, small world system, the spatial wiz plugin, by default will, will generate complex geometries. So if I look in the geometry box down here, I see I have a geometry type of multiple geometry, which actually means that it's indicate or indicates that it's containing two geometries. There's the annotation large geometry, which is one small world geometry, and then there's the annotation small geometry, which is another small world geometry. And that's how we handle complex geometry representations in, in small world. As we bring them across into the FME world, we actually generate these complex multiple geometry representations. Um, FME has a very comprehensive uh, vector and raster geometry format, but there are some additional attributes that, that are relevant to small world, which we can't necessarily store within the, the um, FME model. So these are then stored as geometry traits. So things like the justification for a text string, this is the small world justification. Alignment is a more human readable bottom left, center center, top right, etc. representation. Uh, obviously, world and universe ID to those who are familiar with the internals of small world. Um, any geometry can exist within a world. So we tag those so that we know that information is there. So that's basically just a, a very quick overview. I'm going to go back now to the, um, the source data that I was pulling out and actually put some filters in place on it. So. Um, I can select the feature, go to the format parameters, and I can specify a predicate. So on my, in this instance, I'm actually on my uh, gas main. I go to my export predicate, and I can say, I only want to pull out them if the material is equal to cast iron. OK, so now, hopefully, next time that runs, that will only pull out uh, cast iron uh, pipes. On the main annotations, I want to control those, and I actually want to dictate to those that they will only pull out if the associated gas main has been exported. So we're basically navigating through the join. To do that, I use this export when joined exported option, and I specify that it will pull out main annotation when any main as associated is also pulled out. 
Okay, that's not the whole picture though, because basically the way that this works is um, it'll pull out the mains and then it will pull out the main annotations, but the mains would have had to have run first in order for it to know that a main was extracted. So I need to be able to control the order. So all of our plugins, the, the, the spatial bits for small one and the Oracle spatial one for Oracle spatial, include a uh, definable character called export order. Now what that allows me, and it's just a numeric value, and it just means when you export, it will export in low to high order. If you put no value, it just means zero, so they're all the same. So if I just put one here, I know that the main is at zero or default, so it means that I can guarantee now that the mains will always come out first and the main annotations will always come out second. So now when I run it, it'll go back, it'll find gas mains, it'll filter them by being cast iron, and it will then only pull out the main annotations that are then associated with that. Again, it will take the results and it will write them to my file over here. I've got no such filter on the valves, which are the, the pink ones, so we're not seeing anything kind of controlling those. So, we'll come down here. Unfortunately, these dots are very, very small, but if I select one here, we should be able to see that the, uh, the material is cast iron. If I select an annotation over here, all we know is that the annotation is just associated one of the, with one of the, the mains that was pulled out. So we can put that kind of dependence in there as well. Now finally, I just want to go back and just very quickly make a few changes into the kind of information that we're pulling out from the workspace level as well. We have a series of parameters. We can specify max and min bounds. We can specify the alternative where you want to get the data from. A checkpoint. So in this case, we could potentially say, I want to only extract data that's related to a circuit or a cathodic section or um, some kind of pipeline system reference or whatever. I can specify information about whether I'm synchronizing. Uh, I can specify the world I want to pull the data from. I'm going to change this export topology flag though to say yes. And I will just go ahead and run that again. So what will happen now is it will actually pull out the nodes and links from the small world and it will append them to the features as um, geometry traits that can then be used to build uh, network models in target systems. So and I'll be showing that a little bit more detail, but I just want to go in here and actually just show you really quickly what it looks like. So here's my main. If I look at the geometries of the main, you'll see that we have links associated with the uh, route geometry. So the nodes and the links are all tied in there and are made available. If I then go and look at the valve, I will see on the point geometry that I have the nodes associated with that. So the node ID is the small world node ID. We can rebuild a fully functional network uh, topology by, by going this way. Okay, so that's the end of that first kind of demo. Um, basically, you know, I wanted to show you just the, the ability to actually read data out and, and process it, etc.